This is Scott Vanderplu, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, Episode 67. I went down to the St. James Infirmary, found my baby there, stretched out on a long white table, so sweet, so cold, so fast. Welcome back once more, where we take the written word from AEindex.org and bring it to as much life as I can muster in this voice, <clears throat> bringing you what is new for the month. I'm recording on Canada Day. Uh, you know, sub the po- I try and get the podcast recorded the last day of the month. It doesn't always work. Some days it's two, some some months it's two days before the end of the month. Some days it's all right, the last day of the month, and like this month's turn, it is the first day of the next month. So sorry if you've been, you know, patiently waiting one day for this podcast, but here we are. All right, let's get into it. No big topic for this month. We've got uh, some news, some changes. I don't think I have many letters. I had, uh, yeah, I actually do have some mail as well, so good things all around. All right, let's get into shipping changes. We had, um, well, we had, this, or, you know, I'm not quite sure what to do with solicitations. I'm so I've been posting solicitations as I see them go live from publishers now because you know Diamond is sort of the back seat now for as far as that thing goes. But uh, they're still the main distributor for, as an example, Rebellion 2000 AD. So I had posted the Judge Dread by Mick McMahon Apex Edition when the news came out, and it's been uh, it's uh, it's been online. I put it up in March, right? Uh, but now it's finally hit Diamond, and there's a release date of November 23rd. So. Do I put a new? Do I put up a new diamond solicitations post? Because now the diamond this month in the previous catalog has that, and it has the best of EC Stories Artisan Edition, and it has Todd McFarlane Spider Man Artist Edition, and the Bravo for Adventure. So, a lot going on, lots listed. Uh, do I bother right listing those new things, or since I've already listed them somewhere else, do I make a note? I mean, if I put up a new post, one, it's eyes on the books again. Two, there's an opportunity for uh, affiliate links again. So an opportunity for the site to make uh, something from that. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to really have to give it some thought. All right. Anyway, shipping changes. One shipping change, which I've already just said, the uh, Judge Dread by Mick McMahon Apex Edition has a release date now through Diamond. And actually, when you go on the Diamond site, it says it's being uh, released through uh, Diamond UK. So uh, we'll have to get that. And then, so November 23rd, that's about a month later than what uh, Rebellion 2000 AD is saying it will ship in the UK. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, there's also, and speaking of changes, news, blah, 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 um, you've probably seen online, but a lot of people in Europe and the UK, anyone who ordered directly from uh, 2000 AD Rebellion, already received their Judge Dread by Brian Bull and Apex Edition. I, of course, ordered mine through Diamond because I want my discount. I don't want to pay for shipping. I mean, I want the... So I'm waiting for my copy. Hopefully is will arrive in September. It's still slated for September 7th. Uh, there was some talk. Uh, the 2080 website had a post on Wednesday that they had a few more copies left and they were putting them available for sale. So I'm not sure what that means. I know they've committed. I mean, have they? are they only shipping to Diamond what has been committed through pre-orders? Possibly. Looks like any copies they had directly in the UK have sold out. Uh, there is a fascinating article which um, from the from the printer about how that book was put together. I will uh, I got to find a place to put that link up. I may actually make a separate post for that because that was really interesting. Talking about the paper, the quality, how they put it together, and they have offices in the all over the world. It made me want to think. Hey, I may want to reach out to them if I do a book. So pretty interesting stuff. That's the only shipping change for this month. All right. Uh, we should talk about the mail here. So a couple I received, uh, you know, speaking of mail, well, let's talk actual physical mail. I received my, uh, from Dupuis, I ordered through the 9EM web store. I got my Natacha uh, Dupuis Artiste Edition. Uh, it's pretty nice. I don't believe there's any Natasha in English translated anywhere. It's a, it's very much a, a style uh, that reminds me of Franklin. Uh, Walter is the artist. Um, but, uh, I would, yeah, I'd love to see some translated, but we don't. So that's just the way it is. I have my big box of books coming from Edition Black and White still. Uh, that's shipped. I'm hoping it's going to arrive soon. All right, then let's talk. 
actual email then. I got received some things from people. I got an email from Morgan W. Asking uh, what AE would, uh, he's new to AEs and ones, uh, what I say is worth seeking out. So as always, I give my recommendation to the two spirits. I mean, I, I think those are standout books. Um, you know, for nostalgia, it's Ronin for me. Uh, Sin City is an amazing quality book. Actually, the Souza, like the other Eisner, you know, Contract with God. But, uh, you know, the uh, whatever, you know, it's all about nostalgia, isn't it? And it's all about what interests you and what piques your fancy. And that should be the AE format book that you seek out. And if you like one, then move on and maybe get another one from somebody else. All right, I got some other mail from uh, Michael, who's uh, frequently written me about uh, European books. So uh, he, he just talked about what's new, what's coming out, and uh, some black and white books. Uh, the Europeans have a different uh, take on, I think, uh, comics. They fr- you, they will frequently see um, a translated version of maybe uh, North American work. Uh, you know, standard as it looks. And then I, I see it a lot. Like I, I've noticed it from DC just cause I'm, I follow some of those artists. Then they will release a black and white edition. Uh, the European market seems to really enjoy a black and white edition. So that's right. That's the color stripped away and it's, it's still production. It's still production black and white. It's not, you know, it's not scans of original art or anything like that, but then there's that presentation in black and white. And, uh, there's been some new books out that, uh, uh, there's a box set from Edition of Black and White, and the, they've been putting out some things where you get the black and white volume, and then you get the artist edition, or the AE format edition, where it's uh, scans of the original comic art. And I just, you know, um, I can see that working for if if it's in the language, your native language, and you maybe you've grown and you admire that work, and you want to read it in black and white, and then you want to compare it and contrast the original art. But for me, it's um, there is no nostalgia factor for any of the European works. I'm not a huge fan of the black and white. I mean, I did, I picked up, uh, so DC did the, uh, right, the noir books. They were pretty good. But I feel we could have, you know, I just, I would have benefited more from the original art. So that's, that's just my tank, right? Obviously, I mean, you're here listening to me go on about the AE format books. That's the focus of the site. That's, that's where my interests lie. So I'm not particularly a fan or interested in pursuing black and white volumes. That's, that's just the way it is. But uh, it seems to be hugely popular in Europe, uh, and uh, just something definitely people can, uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. Just like I said earlier, get what you like. Now, for me, I prefer to see a lone edition of just the original art, right? Pages like the A for my books, but that's the way it is. So that that's my email and physical mail from the month. Let's talk out of print sales. Actually, no. Let's let's go to the poll. So the poll again from our good friend uh, David Jacoy who says Batman became DC Comics flagship title after the Batman 66 TV show and the character is stronger than ever. Throughout the decade, superstar artists have left their mark on the Batman covers. What, Which is your favorite decade of Batman covers? Interesting. So, no, it's, it's not your favorite decade of Batman. It's your favorite decade of Batman covers. And then we've got a selection of covers. And, uh, you know, I actually voted for what was posted and what, uh, David provides links to the art and I purposely left out any Dark Knight, uh, covers to skew the eighties. I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't skew the eighties anymore. I don't know. But I, I voted for the two thousands. I, I love the Paul Pope. I love the, uh, Kelly Jones covers that are there. I guess the nineties as well. It's all about your era, right? Um, 34 votes. For the 70s that got the highest and then interesting the 80s 90s and 2000s are all tied then the decade that got the least amount of votes was the 60s so you know at that point you maybe the maybe the 50s would be more iconic i don't know but interesting so you picked your favorite decade of batman covers and i'm yeah i'm in the 2000s i i love batman year 100 by paul pope i so wish we could see an ae format book of that material or a second, you know, a second Kelly Jones Batman would also be good. I, I do love Kelly Jones. I love how it's uh, graffiti has done the volumes they present so well, and uh, Dead Man and the uh, the Batman really nice books. So I can, I would definitely appreciate a second Kelly Jones, but uh, yeah, Paul Pope Batman Year One Hundred. Come on, let's get that going. All right, 
Let's talk out of print sales then. Uh, we had two before I get into this. Let's got let's talk two new rec three new record prices. At the bottom of my uh, post now, I'm putting record prices and the uh, how much it went for and the date. So three records were set this month. When I'm looking back at sales, right? So I, you know, in June, I'm looking back at May sales, and then anything that catches my eye as well that has occurred up to that point that's hit a record. So we have Dave Givens Watchmen. Artifact Edition variant cover, so it one sold for three fifty nine ninety eight. So the the original the Dave Gibbons Watch Artifact Edition normal edition is sold out. So the variants are harder to get. So three fifty nine ninety eight. That's pretty good. Um, Sam Keys the Max Artist Edition sold one copy sold four ninety four ninety five. So that's the Sam Keys the Max Artist Edition is the only regular Artist Edition where every copy was signed by the creator. And uh, four ninety four ninety five. Wow, that's long out of print, but that's a big money. But then the big, big money this month is John Burns X Men Artifact Edition, the regular edition, not the signed limited edition with the Wolverine cover. Nope, just the regular edition. The copy sold for eight seventy five. That is just insane. I don't know what what is going on to get that kind of level, but I mean, I and it's that's big money. I'm surprised to see that as we see other, you know. As we see sales of artist edition format books dropping in price uh, that are going on eBay, that just really stands out. All right, now let's talk our normal monthly sales. And these are books that sold in May of 2022 on eBay. One copy of The Alien Illustrated Story sold for $149.99. One copy of Basil Wolverton's Weird Worlds sold for $200. One copy of Batman The Dark Knight Returns Frank Miller Gallery Edition sold for $200. Three copies of Bernie Wright's and Artifact Edition Second Print sold for an average of one seventy nine ninety nine. One copy of Best of EC Artist Edition Volume Two sold for one seventy nine ninety nine. One copy of Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights, <laughs> Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and Assassins sold for two ninety nine ninety nine. That's actually down a little from what we've seen, so that's surprising. Conan Red Nails Original Art Archives Volume One, four copies sold for an average of three forty four ninety nine. That's still carrying that momentum from appearing on Kayfabe. Two copies of Dave Cockrum's X-Men sold for an average of one fifty four fifty four. One copy of David Mazzucchelli's Daredevil Born Again sold for two fourteen ninety nine. So that sort of hovers, you know. There was a high point for that book about four fifty, but then I notice two fifty is about what that book goes for. So if you can get a little under two fifty, you got a good deal. Two copies of Frank Cho's Savage Wolverine sold for an average of one sixty nine ninety five. Three copies of Jack Kirby the Forever People Art Edition sold for an average of eighty nine thirty two. Three copies of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four Artist Edition sold for an average of one sixty six sixty six. One copy of the World's Fantastic Four World's Greatest Artist Edition, that's the twice up one, sold for two twenty two fifty. One copy of Jack Kirby's The Mighty Thor sold for two hundred. One copy of Jim Lee DC Legends sold for one thirty nine ninety seven. That's a, not a bad deal. Two copies of Jim Starlin's Marvel Cosmic sold for an average of one fifty two fifty. One copy of John Byrne's Fantastic Four Artist Edition sold for two twenty. One copy of John Byrne's Marvel Classics Artifact Edition sold for ninety nine ninety nine. One copy of John Byrne's X Men Artifact Edition sold, as we talked about previously, for eight seventy five. Insanity. Two copies of Romita's The Amazing Spider Man Artist Edition sold for an average of one eighty sixty seven. That's the first volume. One copy of Mad Artist Edition sold for one eighty nine. Three copies of Mike Mignola's Hellboy and Helena. The story's second print sold for an average of one ninety four ninety nine. No first print sold. One copy of Mike Mignola's The Amazing Screw on Head and Other Curious Objects sold for one thirty six. That's a bargain. One copy of P. Craig Russell's Murder Mysteries and Other Stories sold for one hundred seven fifty. That book, those P. Craig Russell books, really don't come up often, or they do come up and they don't sell. I don't know what is which is. I think it's they don't come up a lot. One copy of Ross Andrews' The Amazing Spider Man sold for one fifty five. One copy of Sam Keeps the Max, as we previously discussed, for ninety four ninety five. One copy of Sergio Aragona's Grew the Wanderer for one seventy five. Two copies of Spawn Vault Edition uh, sold for three forty nine fifty. No copies of Spawn Vault Edition two sold. Uh, two copies of Star Wars Artifact Edition sold for an average of seventy four ninety nine. One copy of Star Wars Dark Times Gallery Edition sold for ninety five. One copy of Stranko Nick Fury Agent of Shield sold for three hundred, which is a little bit high in there. Uh, first print. No. One copy of The Prisoner. Original Art Edition sold for 100 That's down from what it's been selling for. One copy of Walter Simonson's The Mighty Thor Artist Edition. First print sold for eighty nine ninety nine. 
Two copies of Eliasner's A Contract with God Curator's Collection sold for an average of 167.27, so that's undercover. Two copies of Will Eisner's The Spirit Artist Edition sold for an average of 163. So as you see, we're you know we're we're below those record prices that we saw, but we are still seeing bumps for books that are you know there's I think there's just a somebody really wants it and they're willing to pay and that's right that's what eBay is good for uh, instant gratification or finding that bargain. All right, speaking of eBay, let's discuss briefly the three ways you can help the Artist Edition Index. Yeah, I'm still calling it Artist Edition Index. I, you know, I, I, I'm labeling it A Index. It's just easier. I'll get links that way. Uh, but it is the Artist Edition Index, and I don't think calling it A Index instead of Artist Edition Index helps me with IDW in any way. I mean, it's not like I'm getting any links, any review copies, any, any press from IDW about my review. So better just to stay true, call it what I'd like. And uh, A index it, it it fits nicely on the masthead. Uh, it fits places better than Artist Edition Index. So, but we know what AE stands for, right? So I'll continue with that. All right, supporting the site three ways. First way, please use the links. That's the best way. It doesn't cost you anything. It's no extra effort. But when you click and buy something through the site, through eBay, or things from another world, or Forbidden Planet, or Amazon to a certain extent, A books, right? Uh, those all give me a percentage of your purchase. And that is awesome. That's that's actually my primary means of income for the site is eBay. And then then after that, it's my, it's a big drop. But then it's things from another world, and then Forbidden Planet, and then Amazon really trails. But uh, another way is to be a Patreon patron. That's just uh, a dollar or whatever you'd like to contribute, or whatever funds in your own native country. Just to say thank you, I like your site. Here's uh, you know here's a uh, an amount. So that is also greatly appreciated. And the third way to support the site is by buying something from the store. Uh, the store volume has really dropped lately. Um, I had some, I thought I had a sale, but uh, nothing happened. It looks like people from Europe are approaching me mostly. And then, right, you've got those European shipping prices. So that's unfortunate. But uh, most books are now down to cover. I may be dropping the rest of the books that aren't covered down to cover. So that's just to see if I can get some movement. But if you're thinking about buying a book and you get it from the store, it'd be greatly appreciated. All right. That's the spiel. Now I've got two reviews this month as I try and do every month. And I, as I spoke about last time, I'm trying to do one uh, foreign language and one English. So my let's start with my foreign language volume this month. And that is Mickey Mouse Cafe Zombo. Now that is by uh, Regie Luzel. And it, the reason I, you know, it's interesting. I bought this. I loved the look of it. I'd seen it online. I bought it and it sat in my pile for, mm, I want to say a year about. And then I saw Fantagraphics was releasing zombie coffee, which was the translation of the work. And it's about the same format. It's the small format. It's how it was released in Europe, the original version. And, uh, I reviewed that on my sister site, eBabble. I'm really not doing much in eBabble anymore, so it's, it's few and far between. The links for eBabble are at the bottom of the index uh, footer. But I reviewed it there, and then I thought, yes, this is now I've got to open this other, I've got to open the uh, Cafe Zombo, which, uh, you know, I wasn't sure, you know, I checked the text, and it just says Cafe Zombo, and then it's in quotes is the Zombo. Uh, in the blurb, it mentions that it's Cafe Zombo Lux, or, you know, as in Deluxe. But it's not a uh, tirage de tête, or it's not a right a head print, which is what a lot of the AE format books in French are. But uh, really fascinating book. So it's thirteen point seven inches by eighteen inches, and it's uh, it's landscape format, just like the book. It's told in comic strip format. So, and then when you open it up, you see. Or it's first off, these are all signed editions out of four ninety nine. I have number four twenty two. They're all signed by. They have tip in plate. Signed by Luzel, who, interestingly, I found out, lives in Quebec. So I've been watching Canadian festivals, uh, Bandesonet festivals in Quebec, to see if Luzel appears at all. So I, I wouldn't mind, you know, I, it's about a six-hour drive for me to get to either Montreal or Quebec City, depending on where I'm going, right? Five hours, seven hours. Uh, I've, I've been, so I've been trying to watch and see if there's something worth going up there for. So far, no, but uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, sorry, back to the book. Um... 
you get actually three tiers of art. You get Luzel's pencils, you get Luzel's inks, and then you get a colored version, but it, it's actually been colored for this edition. It's not the coloring that was of the production book, and I compare it in the in the review. I put up a, a my English the English language uh, colors and book and format are match the French. I, I checked the uh, Glenat website and they look the same. So other than obviously English and French, so the colors are vastly different when you compare them. It's it's striking actually how different they look. But uh, I you know it's he's. Uh, this edition, the, the palette is really limited and it, it looks great. And, you know, comparing, go, this is such an interesting opportunity to see pencils, inks, and then finished production colors. It looks so amazing. And this is such an opportunity that we don't get with a lot of right original art because it's produced in a page, right? So maybe we can compare a pencil page to an inked page like we've seen um, with uh, the Steve Rude books, right? But uh, this is just one page, go right through it. And uh, really, it's an amazing book. Now, what it is still, there is are still copies available. That's what I was surprised with. I had looked for this book about two years ago when I first started looking at French books. Uh, I had, I placed an order and then I didn't want to pay the shipping because I wasn't at the time, I wasn't mentally in that headspace to pay European shipping. Now I've just accepted it and I work in, you know, the cost of shipping and that's just part of what it's going to cost me to get this book. But at the time, I wasn't. So, this book's still available through BD Fugue, which is a, a, a basically an online reseller of other bookstores. So that's that's a nice opportunity. That is an affiliate link for me. So if you purchase from BD Fugue, I do get a little something from it, and I would appreciate if you did. But, I mean, if you are a fan of Luzel, if you're a fan of Mickey Mouse, if you bought the calf, zombie coffee book from Fantagraphics and want to see the original art, gorgeous. This is the book to have. It, it is stunning. It's a beautiful presentation. This is my first Glenat, uh, you know, uh, AE format book, and it's really well done, just gorgeous. And what I, uh, it's interesting because it comes in a, it comes in a case much like uh, Tashin books do, where it's in a cardboard case and it comes, it's got the handle and it's a really nice looking box, and then you open the box and this book is in a slip case, and then you pull the sleeve book out of the slip case and then you've got the book. It's a beautiful package. Really, really well done presentation. Uh, you know, five stars to Glenat for what they've produced here. Uh, yeah, I can't speak highly enough of this book. Go out and get it. Yeah, that's all I can say. Moving on to the English review of this month. Now, here's something from highest levels of production to, you know, standard levels of production, I'd say. And that is Batman Hush Unwrapped. Now, oh, um... You know, I forgot, to, I, last month and this month, I, I've been neglecting neglecting the blurbs. But let me give you the blurb to Batman Hush and Wrapped. A new unprecedented edition of the classic Batman epic from writer Jeff Loeb presents the art of comics superstar Jim Lee in its pencil form for the very first time. Batman Hush is a thrilling mystery in which Batman sits out to discover the identity of a mysterious mastermind using the Joker, the Riddler, Ra's al Ghul, and the Dark Knight's other enemies and allies as pawns in a plan to wreak havoc. This new deluxe edition hardcover is a delight for fans of comic book artwork as it presents Lee's artwork in a crisp pencil form for the very first time. So, this is uh, 306 pages. It's 7 by 10 standard, you know, hardcover size from DC. It's $39.99 US. Now, I'll mention right off the bat, this came out in 2011. This was the first unwrapped book. And it has been repackaged with a new cover by DC in 2018. And there's a new edition available and it's readily available, and you don't have to try and hunt eBay for this kind of thing. So I put links on Amazon and uh, just to get the new edition. There, there's no difference. So what do we get here? We get glo- we get thin paper, right? We get very tight binding. We get glossy pages, but we do get to see Jim Lee's pencils in their raw form. And what I really appreciate about this book is Scott Williams writes the introduction, and it's a, it's a great introduction actually. I, re- I really enjoyed it, and Scott Williams. Uh, is, is a, a collector of art and is an excellent inker. But it's interesting to see him write the introduction when, you know, his work does not appear in the book. So, yeah, we get the covers in a darker format and then we go right into the, all the contents. It's the entire Hush series, uh, issues uh, 608 to 619. And we get the uh, Richard Starkings um, lettering. So it's I, I, probably done digitally and it was applied to the original, it was applied to production book when Hush came out, the issues Hush came out and the hardcover. And now here it's applied again. It's actually the only color you'll see in the book, which is a bit jarring, but uh, it does provide those color pops, right? And you get to read this. So most likely anybody buying this has already read Hush. Now they get to read it again, but they get to with all the pencils and you see the, you see like the X marks where he wants, you know, heavy, he wants blacks. 
And you see a, a lot of detail from uh, Lee in his pencils. Uh, they, this book actually presents really well. And then he, he's done some... Uh, there's flashback scenes that are painted. So they also present well. I don't know if it's... I don't know what that is. Uh, wash or is that uh, watercolor? I think it's watercolor. But they present really nicely as well. So you got a beautiful book. If you're looking for pencils. I mean, it's it's a small size. 7 by 10 is small. But then you have to weigh that against 300 pages, 40 bucks. I mean, it's the same price as your as the Hush hardcover. Uh, I have Hush in absolute format, so I, you know, you can compare that to this. You can really uh, dig into the pencils, and you can see Lee's technique. It's it's a really nice idea. It's and it's also nice to see that DC has kept it going. Um, I don't remember when the last Unwrapped came out. There's been some that have been canceled. Those are the newer ones have been canceled. I have, I think, all of them, and I will be reviewing them as I go. But again, as I say every month, I've got a big stack of books that I have not gone through. And uh, but we'll we'll try and do one foreign language book, right? One English book. So this may be filling my English language books for a while, as I'm running out of catalogs and art books and other sort of not quite AE books, right? All right. Uh, I want to go back and uh, Mickey Mouse Cafe Zombo. I want to going to give you the blurb, and I didn't give you the price, uh, so I'm a bit I'm a bit uh, negligent there. So all right, in 2016, Regis Luzel caused a sensation by signing his big comeback as a complete author, or cartoonist as we say in English, with Cafe Zombo, a respectful and intimately personal tribute to the famous character of Mickey Mouse, a sumptuous album that we have decided for the holidays to offer you in an exceptional limited edition, benefiting from an exceptionally large format. This unpublished work. And specially supervised by the author will present on each page a strip of the album in three stages of creation. Pencil, black and white, and colors, which will be specially reworked for the occasion. Enhanced by more than ten pages, original graphic bonuses, and explanatory text, Cafe Zombo Looks is the ideal setting to celebrate the genius of Louis Zell. So that was released by Glenat in December 2019. It is 18 by 13.7. It's 154 pages. It's in a slipcase hardcover. And it's 199 euros. Let me click the BD Fugue link and see if it is still available. It is currently not available. Unbelievable. It was available when I wrote this review. So maybe somebody's already bought it since then. All right, anyways. Shop around for it. Sorry, everybody who was looking for that. I did, uh, yeah, the extras are nice, actually. Uh, there's just some production pages you get to see. Apparently he did a uh, BD album, which is a, a French store. He did a custom cover for them that's nice uh no is it no was it if any hold on no i don't know he did a custom cover anyways it looks nice there's some preliminary artwork there's some pencils i i can't say enough of this book anyways that's all uh and i wanted to dive into the unwrapped books because they they're out there they're you know original art is not mainstream and dc you know dc is weird right they give you know they let IDW do AE format books from the 70s. And then they let Graffiti Designs do AE format books uh, of newer material, 90s and up, 80s, 90s, right? And then they produce this in-house. And then they produce this line in-house. Then they do the noir books, which are, like I said, mirror the European format. And then they don't let anybody do AE format books, almost like they're going to do it themselves. And then there's this big hiatus, what, you know, what, I don't, I can't imagine what goes on at DC. There's, you know, there's these streaks of genius where you think, oh, look at what they're doing, making these things available. And then there's the, the, the expansion and the contraction, right? I think we're in that contract contraction phase right now where you just think, where is the stuff? But then I guess, you know, are, are is worldwide paper shortages? Are they clearing up? Is shipping clearing up? Maybe where, you know, where are the AE format books? Where, where's IDW? We've had, you know, this is the second year. Let me check the A index and check shipping dates. I mean, last year IDW produced two books. Let's go back to 2020. Let's start there. So we had uh, 2020. We had two from Fantagraphics. We had one from Wayne Herald. We had one from Graffiti Designs, and then we had two from IDW. Two. 2021. We had two from IDW. One from Rude Dude. Right. 2022, we've had one from Wayne Allen Herald, and we've had two from IDW. IDW hopefully will release. Now, I mean, we say two from IDW. One was new material, 
One was the reissue of Dave Stevens, The Rocketeer. We're going to get two more from IDW this year. One is a straight-up reprint, uh, the Alex Toth book, and one is the Todd McFarlane. So we will see two new material books from IDW this year. So that's sort of holding their schedule of two per year. Uh, I have not Scott to, spoken with Scott Dunbeer in quite some time. I mean, it was, you know, when, when the when the vo- number dropped, he, sa- he said, said his goal was four a year. Uh, and I'm looking, when was the last time? we 2019, we did see four. 2018, we saw more than that. So we, we hit four in 2019, then we dropped to two for 2020, 2021, 2022. We'll technically have four published, two reprints, or I guess. That is meaning four, right? But all we can do is we can, you know, all we can do is support these volumes. Uh, we can pre-order IDW is, you know, when, when you pre-order a book from Amazon, you know, they see that pre-order. When you pre-order a book from anywhere and that order goes in, they see those pre-orders, right? They, they realize and they see that these, what the demand is. Same with anybody, you know, any of these publishers. I mean, so I hate being that guy who says, you know, you know, pre-order the book, but if it's material you already, you already love, then make the pre-order. If you're on the fence, then please don't pre-order it. Wait for me to do the review, check it out, see what other fans are discussing or talking about on the forum, and then make that informed buyer's decision. But if it's material you love and you know you want it, then please pre-order and just, it get one, it guarantees you get the book, which again, you know, I hate about our hobby that you have to pre-order something to make sure you get it. But that's, you know, that's the reality. That's feels like that's the reality since the direct market began. And if you want it, and you know you want it, put in the order. Generally speaking, if you pre-order from an online retailer or somewhere, you can also get a discount. You may not get a discount after, right? And then you may be haunting comic shops or eBay trying to find that volume. So if you can, and you know the material, and you love it, do the pre-order. Let the publisher know in advance that you're really behind this work and you, you're you anxious to get it. All right, that's it for me this month. I've babbled on enough. Please check out the anything we've talked about. Please go to the site and uh, check it out in its print form or digital reading form, I guess, is a more accurate thing. And we will talk again next month. Let her go, let her go, God bless her. Wherever she may be, she can search this wide world over. She'll never find a sweet man like me.